Hi, my name is Jeff Jacobson, and in the SCA, I'm known as Maestro Lot Ramirez. I have been getting a lot of questions recently about uh, getting started with longsword uh, in cut and thrust, and I wanted to get a series of quick videos to do some fundamental mechanics or how to train on your own uh, and building the core mechanics for getting good, smooth, calibrated, and technical, technically sound cuts uh, that will allow you to become strategic and tactical when you approach your opponent on the cut and thrust field. So, um, so let's get started uh, with that goal in mind. First and foremost is we need to start thinking about how we hold the sword. When you pick up the sword, how you hold it is very important to uh, how you're going to use it. So rule number one, do not hammer grip uh, the sword. This is not a club uh, and we're not swinging it like a stick. What we want to do is instead of gripping sort of straight on and shoving our hand up towards the cross, we actually want to uh, put the sword kind of uh, perpendicular and, uh, and shake its hand. Just like you're shaking the hand of somebody else, you want to shake the hand of the sword. So you can see that my fingers are underneath, but I'm not all the way wrapped under. Uh, my hand is the big meaty part of my hand is on top of the sword. My thumb is kind of long up the thing. I don't have to have my thumb all the way jammed up the blade. I just want it nice and loose here towards the top of the hilt so that when I open my hand and close my hand, it does this actuation. This is actually what's going to create the cutting motion, uh, the arcing motion that I'm going to use for my cut. So here we want open the hand, close the hand, and that should nice and easily uh, throw the cut. You notice that my hand is in line with the sword, so my arm is here, my hand is not, my elbow is not sticking out because I've gripped sideways against the sword. I put my hand in line with the sword, and that goes for my left hand too, or my off hand. I'm going to put it down near the pommel. Uh, there's some people who say don't, uh, don't grab the pommel, you want both hands on the grip. Uh, I'm of the you can grab the pommel uh, uh, school of thought. Uh, there's lots of documentation for grabbing the pommel. So for me, I put my hand again in line with the weapon. It's not sticking out sideways. My arm is behind the sword. My hands are open and loose. And I use this open and close actuation to create the, the cutting motion that's going to be a nice, smooth, easy cut as I, as I move into Okay, so now that we have our nice actuated action where hands are making open and closing, that creates the arc for the sword that we're gonna do. We're gonna add in the extension of the arms. I don't want my arms making big up and down motions. What I want my arms doing mostly is going forwards, out and extended towards the target. Uh, if I lift my arms and come down, my hands become vulnerable, my sword's behind my hands. What I want is as I close my hands and as I extend, the, the point of the sword, my arms follow behind the sword, right? So that as I cut, my arms go forwards, right? See that from the side is my hands are open and as I close my hands and cut, my arms extend forwards. They're not cutting downward. I'm not stroking out with my arms. I want open hands, closed hands, arms going forwards, arms going backwards. Right? There'll be a little bit of start to shift as we shift our targets. There'll be a little bit of rise and fall with those hands. But for the most part, the hands go out. They do not go up and down. They don't cross in big strokes. We're just going to make stroke. Even when we start coming and making diagonal cuts, my hands are still just going straight towards the target. So for now, what I want to do is just open my hands I'm in a nice uh, sort of early period Vomtog, for instance, or just the sword is on the shoulder, my hands are open, it's not resting, but I'm just nice and loose and relaxed, my elbows are down. Open the hands, close the hands. Open the hands, close the hands. We're just making a downward motion. One. Right, my arms are going straight forwards. So now that we've got our arms going straight forwards, uh, and our hands going open and closed, we're gonna add in a little bit of work from our base, from our feet and our hips to really solidify this cut. So the first thing is first, we always wanna be on the balls of our feet. We don't wanna be on our heels. We don't wanna be leaning backwards. When we cut, if we're leaning backwards, we're unstable. 
and our hand, our, our sword doesn't get out. But when we get sort of shift, make sure you're sort of on the front half of your feet, right? And then so that you notice that I'm over my foot, I'm not behind it. So I'm not cutting like this. I'm cutting like that, which means that my legs are protected, my body is behind the sword. So I want to have my feet, I want to be on the balls of my feet, I'm going to have about shoulder width apart, one foot is going to be back. I'm not going to be 90 degrees, this makes it very difficult to cut. I want to be triangulated towards my opponent, so that my hips are about 45 degrees from where I'm targeting. You can see that the center line is pointed there, my target becomes here, and now as I extend, I'm going to turn that hip and rotate out into my blow, right? So that I become a little more square and I'm coming through the target. So my hands are below. My sword right now is vertical so I can look above my sword to make sure that I'm cutting through my opponent and I'm behind my sword. If I'm below my sword, now I'm vulnerable below and I haven't defended myself as I cut through. We can add to this a footstep if we choose so that that same action from the hip, as I extend the sword, as my arm starts to come forward, as my hip starts to rotate, my foot's going to use that and pass at the end of my blow. So, right? So I've now changed positions. I'm now, again, I'm making a vertical blow. So I'm looking above my sword. It's out in front. I'm still above my leg. If I took too big of a step, I end up here, right? So when I step and I start here, I extend my arms, there's my hip, and there's my cut. So my arms are extended, but my foot is not out and in front. I'm not making a big step because now I'm off balance, my feet are vulnerable, and I'm unstable out front. So I want uh, one of the axioms that I use when I teach this is you want long arms and you want short feet, right? So that as I cut and as I step, I'm gonna make a shorter footstep. This allows me to get in front of my blade, not a big step to be behind it, but I wanna just, I'm stable and I'm fluid in my motion. So we have open hand, open hands, we're in line, we're extending our arms forwards, we're passing with that foot. All right, so the last thing we want to add into this is the idea of cutting at appropriate angles. So far we've made these actions and we've only cut a downward blow. Our arms are extending forwards. They're a little low. They're actually extending towards our sternum, right? And that's what allows us to look over our sword. When we want to start to cut angles, we want to conceptualize our target in terms of uh, quadrants or uh, sort of an eight point star. You have your vertical line straight through the middle of your opponent, right, which is vertical. You have your horizontal line. That horizontal line is really going to pass at about uh, sternum level, right, right below the arms for now. There's a number of different ways to divide the opponent, but realistically, you won't, primarily you want to think about dividing your opponent under the arms, not at the belly. Striking down here is too low of a target and you'll be exposed in your head. You want to keep everything sort of at an upper height. So you want to divide horizontally at the sternum or at the neck, your choice, right? No neck or sternum, something sort of high, right? So you have your vertical line, your horizontal line, and then uh, you have your diagonal lines. So you have sort of an eight pointed star. We're going to cut all eight cuts. Seven of those cuts are going to be fundamentally the same exact mechanics with a small turn of the hands. And then the eighth one, of course, will break all of the rules. But we'll start with the seven cuts, right? Which is the downward cut, which we already covered. Right, so the sword extends out and forwards and down. Uh, the diagonal cuts, which are also one of our principal cuts, is in order to accomplish that, what we want to do is instead of reaching out and swinging again for the fences, extending our hands, is all we have to do is turn our hand, rotate it to the side, right? Put your point into the quadrant of which you're going to cut, 
and your hands, instead of making an arc, what you want to do is instead of going straight forwards, they're going to go into the quadrant that you're cutting to. So if I'm cutting downward and diagonal from my right into the left, I'm going to send my hands a little bit low to the left, right? It doesn't have to be down here, but I want them to go forwards and into the lower left quadrant, right? This allows me to cut a diagonal cut through my body and stay defended behind my sword. If my hands stayed in the upper quadrant, you'll notice that I'm looking in front of my sword, which means I'm very vulnerable in the line in which I'm cutting. What I want to do is cut through the line and create leverage through that space so that now once I've cut through I've defended that line and I can defend anything coming at me and cut past it. So now as I cut that diagonal cut I cut out and I send my hand low into the quadrant not down to the ground but just into the quadrant so there I just cut through that line. A nice diagonal cut from my right the same thing a diagonal cut from my left Right now I'm continuing to just step forward my right foot, but my hands go into the lower quadrant on my left. My point goes the upper quadrant on my, sorry, my point goes to the upper quadrant on my left. My hands go to the lower quadrant on my right. This allows me to go straight forwards and make a cut. My sword will intercept anything that's coming at me through that line. This is the same thing when we start cutting upwards through our diagonals. I want my point to go into the lower quadrant and my hands to go into the upper quadrant. This allows me to make sure I defend myself with my hands. A lot of people when they cut upwards they throw like this and their face and their head is still above their sword and they're vulnerable. They're not going to defend themselves to their headshot. So they'll throw down here and best they get double, right? So what we want to do is take that point, put it into the quadrant we're cutting into and put our hands into the quadrant we're cutting to. So we make an arc with that blade. Our hands are above our head so that we can stay defended as we cut. Same thing cutting from the left, right? My point goes to the left. My hands go up into the quadrant on my right. My hands stay high and I make a straight line with the sword. You'll know which direction you're cutting by where the angle of your blade is. So a lot of people I see, they kind of throw like this and they end here. Well, I didn't cut with my edge in that case because I was coming up this line and my edge is pointed to the side. So if I cut horizontally, then yes, my edge should be pointed to the side. If I cut, if I'm trying to cut by, diagonally and my edge is not aligned with the cut, I'm going to run into trouble. I'm going to hit them with the flat. I'm not going to be defended. My sword is not going to be strong. So you need to make sure when you're cutting through that line that your edge aligns all the way through that cut. Don't worry about letting the sword make big arcing motions. That's what it's supposed to do. As long as your hands stay in the middle, you'll be defended in the time of your cut. Right? So if my hands are coming all the way out, now all of a sudden, I'm very vulnerable to my opponent because my, my hands are now moving all over the place. But if I can keep my hands tight and in the center of the fight, my point can move wherever it wants to go. It makes very large arcs and it makes it very quickly because my hands are doing all of the turning and that's what's keeping me safe. The same thing goes for those horizontal cuts. As I start, I'm just going to turn my sword flat and I'm going to cut through the horizontal cut, right, making sure that my hands go into the quadrant of which I am cutting into, right? So I'm cutting horizontally. I want to make sure that my hands go into the quadrant. I'm a lot again. This is not good because now I'm vulnerable in front of my sword. I want to be behind my sword, not in front of my sword. That's really important in all of these cuts. One, two, up, up, down, diagonal, down, diagonal down vertical and you notice that it doesn't matter what I'm doing with my foot right now I'm just moving it forwards and backwards in order to accommodate the motion of my action right the last and final cut is that rising cut up through the vertical line and this is a very awkward cut so what you find most of the time that this is thrown is thrown with the false edge or the short edge and you make an action with your hands 
almost like you're scooping snow or, or shoveling dirt, I guess. For those of you in Southern California who've never seen snow, right? But the action is a rising action where you're slicing up with the point. But again, you want to make sure that the point gets all the way through that target. You don't want to do this. This won't defend you and it won't cut through the action. You want to make sure you're getting a nice full cut with those. So you have all eight cuts together. You have downward, diagonal, diagonal, horizontal, horizontal, upwards, diagonal, upwards, diagonal, and straight vertical. Right? If you practice those actions, all eight of those cuts, opening and closing the hands, obviously this is a little different, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but all the rest of the cuts are exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the angle, the rotation of the hand, and where you send your leading hands <coughs> to. As you go straight forwards, straight forwards, downwards, 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 upwards, upwards. The arms are still going out straight. That's what's really, really important about all this. I'm staying on the balls of my feet, keeping my, <coughs> my balance point underneath me. Okay, that's it for this first video. Uh, remember, don't uh, rush things. Take it nice and slow and smooth and easy. Keep your hands going forwards. Uh, you're cutting through the center. Your feet are underneath you, staying on the balls of your feet. Everything should be stable. Don't try to power through anything. Just keep it nice and smooth. Next time we'll talk about combat stepping, how to approach a target uh, so that we can calibrate against a Pell and, uh, or a punching bag or whatever else you have. And, uh, and then we can start in increasing the, thing, the actions that we're doing um, with our training. For now, just start with this, cutting through the air, nice and easy. I look forward to hearing from you if you want to comment on the video or contact me via email or Facebook or however messenger you have for me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys. Keep training.